Welcome back to the Middling Along podcast. I'm your host, Emma Thomas, and my guest this time is Erica Davies. Erica is a former fashion editor who's worked with some of the UK's biggest newspapers, magazines, and brands. She founded the hugely popular blog, The Edited, and now has an audience of more than 200,000 followers on Instagram. She's passionate about encouraging women to make bold, confident, and happiness-inducing choices through their clothing and interiors, and her most recent book, Style Chapters, was published earlier this year. Welcome to the podcast, Erica. Thank you so much for having me. So this is your second book. Uh, The first one was uh, called Leopard is a Neutral, is that right? (laughs) That's right, yes. A very useful style guide. So the first one was very much kind of setting out my manifesto for almost like the anti-rules. Because as a fashion editor, I was a fashion editor on national newspapers and magazines for nearly 20 years. Mm. And I think... A lot of the time, I was one of these people who perpetuated that need, in inverted commas, to follow the fashion trends, to follow the rules. You know, you must wear this if you're this shape, and you must wear that if you're that shape. And as I've got older, I've just realized there is such joy and just fun to be had in embracing your body shape, what it is you love, and actually, the rules don't really exist. So leopard set out that manifesto and then when we did style chapters I wanted to do a more visual book because the first one wasn't visual Mm. and this one is much more kind of a riot of color and ideas and style suggestions so that's really what I wanted to to work on. Yeah and you you talk in the introduction here about wanting to write a book for for readers who felt a bit lost or have lost sight of who they are or just or want to be or just dealing with tough times generally needing a bit of a, yeah. a reboot so so what did the what was the kind of the impetus or the inspiration for that in in that approach absolutely my instagram followers i get hundreds and hundreds of messages every week which i love i mean i'm so grateful for the audience that i've created it does very much feel like a community and i love that and i feel as though I'm somebody that they feel they can trust and ask these questions of. So what I was finding was that women in certain age brackets, Mm. so it would always be the same kind of questions at a similar kind of age in your life, were asking me the same thing. So, you know, the younger women who maybe are just about to have a baby, I don't really know what to wear afterwards. I'm going back to work after just having a baby. My body's changed. And then you get older and it's more the menopausal question so you know my body's really changed nothing fits me anymore I don't feel like these colors suit me anymore and I was really finding that I was asked being asked these similar questions at a similar time and I thought actually as women we do go through these chapters of our life where we have different needs our body fluctuates you know our needs change in terms of our clothes our you know fashion choices change so for example I'm rubbish in high heels now but oh god yeah I 15 years ago, I would (laughs) still have been trying. And there's just that we all go through these chapters. And I thought, actually, that's a really nice way of tackling the book. We could make each chapter a specific period of your life so that you can dip into it, but equally you can refer back to it. So hopefully it'll just give you those. I really wanted it to be like a virtual hand-holding session of me being able to help you through that time and just try and get you to get your confidence back because ultimately that's what it's all about. It's just about you finding the confidence yourself. It's not about looking at anybody else. It's not about looking at fashion trends or what we should and shouldn't be wearing. It's about you identifying what it is that makes you happy and what you feel good in and then kind of repeating that throughout these different chapters of your life. Yeah, so so you, you've already talked about that sort of uh, one of those chapters being for, I guess, the, the demographic of people who are listening to this, like me, who get to to that midlife stage and sort of changing body shapes Uh, you know I think certainly there's often that feeling of like oh I certain things feel really old and dating and other things just feel really young and inappropriate so kind of it's like finding that space that you feel comfy in so what what are the kinds of things that you talk about in the book in terms of sort of having a bit of a rethink about finding that style getting out of that sort of funk yeah I I talk about defrumping in the book (laughs) and 
while that sounds like I'm being negative, I'm really not because I genuinely think it's a word that we would probably all use about ourselves at some point in our lives. You know, we think, oh, I put this on. I used to love this, but now it just, I just feel a bit frumpy mm, this feels wrong. and it doesn't, <laughs> it just feels wrong. You know, it could be a heel shape on a pair of boots. It could be, I mean, the most common one is jeans. That's what I get asked a lot about. And, you know, for a long time, boot cut jeans were very fashionable. Then it went to skinny jeans. And now it seems to be mum jeans, which are a bit more of a straight cut. And I think I'm not the best person to ask about jeans because as I do a little section on my TikTok about I don't wear jeans, these are the trousers I wear instead. But jeans are a very quick kind of reminder on what you can and cannot update you know, jumper styles, things like that. And I always suggest it's a really good idea to have a look at the things, really try on. I mean, this goes back to the beginning of the book where I suggest that you really just try on everything in your wardrobe. And I mean, everything in your wardrobe and just be really honest about it. You know, this yeah, doesn't fit. Be brutal. This is, <laughs> yes. You know, why are you, why is this taking up space in your wardrobe when it's really old it doesn't fit you anymore it doesn't suit the life that you're living now or you might have something that you recently bought and you want to in inverted commas again slim into or you know lose a bit of weight for just it just doesn't make you feel good about yourself so I think the honest answer is just be honest about what it is that does suit your life and your needs now I always suggest as well that it's really worth going to a stylist at somewhere like John Lewis, A, because they're free, B, because they're really good, and C, because they've got amazing brands. They've got loads of different brands. And you can book in an appointment. And if you wanted to get new jeans, for example, you could go and specifically request that, and they will organize a whole load of jeans for you to try on. So it's just really worthwhile taking that time and investing in yourself. And if you wanted, you know, a a blazer or you want to go back to work, just getting somebody else's perspective is really useful because I think we become quite entrenched in how we view ourselves. And it's very difficult to then see anything beyond that. You know, it's, oh, no, I don't suit red. Oh, no, I'm definitely this kind of a trouser person. And actually, you might not be anymore. That might have suited you back in the day, but actually it doesn't work for you now. And actually, if we're really kind of a lot, so many of us are are time poor, if you're kind of dedicating that space and someone's doing all of that running around and finding things for you, it's actually probably a much more time efficient way of of doing it than than trying to sort of wander around yourself. And yeah, I don't know, I kind of get get a bit overwhelmed anyway, if I go into a big department store. It's (laughs) really overwhelming. It really is overwhelming. And it's overwhelming for me. And I did it for years. I used to run around Oxford Street, you know, picking up pieces for shoots and dressing models and dressing real women for features and all of that sort of stuff. So I picked up a lot of tips along the way. And in fact, in the first book, I talk about I do think that I can I can go into a store now and I do something called the scan. So I will very quickly identify the pieces in a store or the areas in a store that I think are worthy of investing that five minutes of my time or whatever. I'm definitely not somebody who loves shopping and will go through every single item. I want to be efficient with my time and I know what I want and I know what suits me. So I will now kind of head for those areas. And But it's something you can definitely teach yourself, but you have to be really honest and do this kind of sorting out your wardrobe stage first so you know the bits that you're missing and the bits that you need and what about that sort of changing body shape I mean we know that uh, with the sort of the change in hormones that that there's a tendency to kind of for that uh, I think Sam Baker calls it the flesh duvet uh, suddenly kind of appears around the middle bit (laughs) yeah kind of like oh when did that happen yeah Um, yeah so yeah any hints tips suggestions for for kind of feeling confident if we're feeling a little bit uncomfortable in a bit uncomfortable I think a a really key point is don't worry about the sizing on your clothes you know Mm. I think a lot of us hold on to this idea that 20 years ago we wore a size 10 and it just doesn't matter because who actually sees well they're so the variable as well well this is the problem you know you can go to H&M and you're a 10 in one thing or you're a 14 in a, in a Marks and Spencer's it just makes no sense there is no standardization I just think it's always worth trying on a couple of sizes the pieces that are here's a fashion editor tip for you the pieces that are slightly oversized are always going to look better on you and I don't mean 
the pieces that swamp you. I mean the pieces that just skirt your shape. And particularly if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit vulnerable about weight gain in certain areas, you know, think about ways that you can wear your clothes. It's about proportion. It's about draping. It's about fabric choices. So if you're a bit conscious about your tummy, go for something that's slightly thinner so a thinner jumper or something like a silk shirt nothing too rigid things that will move with you that are fluid and tuck in a little bit of the jumper but don't tuck in all of it or leave it loose and belt it you know you can play around with all sorts of things you could have a wrap top which always looks really nice make more detail about around the neckline maybe go for a necklace and then a wrap top with a camisole underneath that will just give you that beautiful soft draping rather than the cling and I think that's always worth just playing around with the proportions of your clothes and really having a think about you know what it is you're trying to do because we don't want to disguise ourselves a lot of people I mean, I I love that kind of shape. I like the oversized shape. And I do have some people saying, oh, it's it's too big on you or, but, you know, again, personal preference. Yeah. And I think that's why you need to try on lots of different styles and just have a play around because as we go through these different chapters of our lives, we will have changed and our tastes may have slightly shifted. And it's just always worth refreshing. It's also really great looking at what other people are wearing. I know I've said don't look to other people for advice or trends. But if you're looking on social media or you're looking on things like Pinterest, which I get a lot of visual inspiration from, I think it's really useful to sort of temperature check what are the current styles or what are the current colors and then have that in your mind when you're then going shopping because you can kind of think, oh, okay, if I get maybe you know, reds everywhere at the moment. If I just have a pop of red, that might make me feel a little bit more contemporary. That might make me bring up that black trouser suit that I wanted to wear. It's things like that, that we'll, you'll just absorb, process, and then put into your own style. So you talked a little bit about trying to find specific things to to kind of update what you've already got. But are there, uh, if we want to, I guess it comes back to that defrumping, isn't it? <sighs> Are there some kind of easy shortcuts to kind of feel like you've got a bit more kind of personality and flair, especially for, you know, maybe those of us who've been working at home in our kind of comfies for so long now and it's you kind of going out and it's not just jeans and a nice top anymore. It's just like, oh my God, I don't, you know, I just don't know what. Where to start. Yeah. What, what do I even, you know, where to go out, out anymore? I think it, a really nice tip that I've talked about a lot in the book is just it's almost like you're upselling your casual look so what are the casual looks that you're comfortable in so it could be a pair of elasticated wide leg jersey trousers and a t-shirt or a sweatshirt and rework that in a more evening way so it's that's about the fabric choice so for example rather than a sweatshirt you could have a really lovely satin look top with you know blues on sleeves and a round neck and you could wear that with a pair of tuxedo trousers you could still get kind of elasticated waist joggers but maybe in a more luxe fabric something Mm. like a satin so start there start small don't suddenly think you've got to completely reinvent the wheel and change your wardrobe completely I think go small it could be something as simple as a new lipstick it could be something as simple as going to get your hair blow dried it could be something as simple as a really gorgeous pair of sparkly flat shoes because you know you can't wear heels anymore you know it's just making these really simple changes that you don't have to do lots to give yourself a refresh might also be worth having a look at your friend's clothes you know is there some way you could almost kind of swap pieces with each other and have a bit of fun that way you know because it doesn't have to be brand new it could just could be new to you and then you could just have a bit of fun with it well there's yeah clothes swaps are, are really taking off I know you're involved in one and then somebody uh so I interviewed Lou Featherston from Lou and Lou Land who's uh I know she's been organizing some amazing clothes swaps so that's definitely one way to kind of Try try some kind of slightly edgier things, maybe without yes. having to invest to spend a fortune. Money. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, lots of us, myself included, are, are trying to think about the sustainability angle as well, and sort of either buying sort of pre loved stuff or yeah. um, you know much more sort of charity shopping. Vinted, vinted's a big one. Vinted's a good one. 
but also just trying to sort of think about making what we've already got work harder for us. So kind of any good recommendations for, for people who are on a budget or even just, you know, finding some real gems out there when, you know, when, when what should we be looking out for? Well, make friends with the search terms. So on eBay, for example, you really need to be specific. I always keep a little file either on Pinterest or in my Instagram um, where you can create folders of pieces that I really love full price. And then I just kind of go back to that regularly and might look on Vinted or Depop or Vestiaire or eBay. I mean, I'm on these all the time. There's also some brilliant Instagram vintage sellers. So people like Matiza Market, Manifesto Woman. I love, love, love finding pieces that I had wanted full price at a secondhand or pre-loved price. We all love a bargain. (laughs) We all love a bargain. So that's a really good tip is just to kind of keep that ongoing file and then just refer back to it, see if you can find it. Make friends with the search terms, as I say, so you can be really specific on eBay. You can set up alerts really easily for specific pieces or specific brands. Um, I think as well on places like Vinted, they're very good at almost selling the pieces that people have just had a clear out. You can get things that are pretty mm. much brand new, some with tags, you know, that are just not not been worn, but people have had a clear out. I'm also a massive charity shop fan because I just, I've had some brilliant pieces that I've stumbled across in charity shops. And it's even things, you know, like an H&M cotton blouse, embroidery cotton blouse for three pounds, but the quality is really nice. It's the the proper cotton. It feels great. I've also got some brilliant Celine shoes that I found in a charity shop once. So, you know, you you just have to kind of regularly pop in and check in on these things, but definitely make friends with your search terms. I think that would be my number one tip when it comes to finding pre-loved pieces. Mm. I'm very lucky that uh, we've got an Oxfam superstore here in in Oxford. (gasps) So regular forays up there. Do you get good bits in there? I think so. I'm a, I'm a kind of somewhere between a size 16 and 18. So I think there's loads of good stuff in smaller sizes. And then at right. my kind of end of the scale is a bit more hit and miss. But I have picked up some some lovely things and uh, yeah. kids as well. So definitely. Kids uh, is brilliant. I mean, I know I've got lots of friends who only buy vintage for their children. And I've got this ongoing issue that I bang on about on Instagram I know what about you're say. <laughs> yes about kids clothing and how diabolical I think boys clothing mm. specifically is and I've got a 13 year old son he's you know snap growing like a weed yeah, he's taller than me and and yeah tiny tiny waist. tiny tiny waist <laughs> and you know he is slightly on the cusp now of coming out of the because most children's ranges only go to a 14. I know. Age so annoying. And then the men's start waist start at, you know, 28 or something. It's, he's nowhere near a 28 waist. And also it really annoys me because they're basically trying to push you out of the kids' ranges so you can pay more in the men's ranges. Yeah. So I've got this ongoing thing, but a lot can of you the set advice up your own I'm label, getting. Erica. Oh, I'd love <laughs> you to. Make, honestly. <laughs> you make so much money. <laughs> well, I'm in talks, but it's a very slow process. <laughs> and I th- a lot of my friends rely completely on Vinted. I mean, it's it's so funny, isn't it? As a 47 year old mother, I'm. I find it hilarious that all the teenagers want to wear 90s clothes <laughs> and they and they think that's vintage. And I keep thinking that's only five years ago. Surely that's only five years ago. <laughs> yeah. And you hear all that, what's that? The Heather Shimmer lipstick coming back. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Surely. Well, Clinique have just re-released Black Honey lipstick, which was Ooh. my teenage year as well. There you go. What goes around comes around again, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> no such thing as a new idea, is there? <laughs> and so you've got a whole chapter here about dressing for menopause uh, and, and you even in your introduction you're, you're quite upfront about you know being going through perimenopause yourself mm-hmm. um, and even having a bit of a run-in with your your GP, you <laughs> My GP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who asked me if it was if I was asking him about the perimenopause because it was trendy <laughs> honestly I said no not trendy just you know we're a little bit more uh, in the know now about all these things that are happening to our bodies and our minds yeah we are at least all talking about it a lot more yeah I guess somewhat unsurprisingly you kind of you know you're talking about about layers but 
some of the tips that you've got in here sort of you know thinking about kind of upgrading your your sort of your vest top so that actually you know if you do have to <laughs> whip all your top layers yeah. off you're kind of feeling a bit more I tell you what I really like a manners vest tops they're fantastic I don't know if you know them no yeah. I haven't heard of those oh Ooh, it, okay um, you're manners giving me the tips now yeah well yeah so very very thick very stretchy and actually uh yeah. can wear them without a bra which is oh perfect game changer <laughs> yeah I mean it, that's very hit and miss for me post COVID I have to say it's just you know I'm not really into the bra the old bra going back on now I've found these um sort of t- little kind of comf- comfort bra bras that's that's called, oh, okay. from Georgia Asda which I've bought in every color they just are so comfortable are they oh well there you go yes. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll try one of those uh although that's well endowed in the uh in the chess department so it needs to be reasonably <laughs> well constructed reasonably otherwise. supported yes if absolutely. I'm gonna leave the house anyway and not scare anyone but yeah other sort of uh and, uh, and actually you talk as well about some of the the brands that are making clothes specifically to sort of help with hot flushes and temperature regulation so 51 apparel yeah. is one that I hadn't come across before yeah I've heard of become is 51 a bit more sort of higher higher price point or no then none of them are particularly high price point and I think that they're still relatively simple in terms of the choice of you know pieces but I think that's okay for for outfit mm. basics so having the building blocks um, that you can add things absolutely to absolutely and you want you know you really want pieces that are going to absorb the moisture if you have a hot flush you want pieces that you're going to be able to take off easily if you need to peel them off or add them so yes layers is obviously I mean everybody talks about layers through menopause but I think there's a there is a chic way of doing it and I think you can still feel like yourself while you're going through this and it would just be nice if more women talked about it actually because I think for a long time we've kind of had to hide hide it away and mm-hmm. it would be lovely to see a female politician wouldn't it just on stage just saying hang on a minute just need to take a minute <laughs> but it's just um yeah there there is definitely a chic way to do it layers are your friend and keeping it quite a minimal wardrobe I think will also help I've got a, a friend who's got a great tip about tights because she just cannot wear tights yes. as she's going through the menopause but she can wear leggings so what she'll do is wear leggings with a sock rather than a tight I think she feels very overwhelmed and hot in tights mm. but the leggings and the sock for some whatever reason so it's just about making those sorts of changes as well but you're right when you say find a great vest top because I do think a vest top is the the ultimate basic for going through the menopause because I wear them all the time <laughs> and what about confidence because I think that's another thing that you know when we're going through this that kind of confidence whether it whether it's a kind of a physical confidence or whether it's more of a sort of a psychological thing that can really take a battering and, and clothes pay, play such a big part in in that Clothes and hair, I always think. I always feel so much yeah. more confident when I've got a new haircut. Exactly. Or my mum used to say, oh, if I've got my mascara on, I can deal with anything. I think it's about giving yourself that dopamine hit. And that's why colour is so important, in my opinion. Because I do think if you put something on that does instantly brighten your soul, you're going to see it in your face, you're going to see it in your eyes, you're going to see it in your whole persona. And the way that you present yourself is going to completely change you know your shoulders will go back and you'll stand up straighter and it's about finding the pieces that speak to you and the the things that are going to make you comfortable but again as I said earlier it's not about making these huge changes it could just be a top a lipstick a pair of earrings it's something really simple and small because yes we all have these insecurities particularly at this time of our life and there's a lot going on you know I'm sure I'm not alone in having you know aging parents and it, all of that sort of stuff and teenage children at the same time and then oh yes my husband occasionally wants to talk to me it's it's you know you're pulled in a lot of different directions and sometimes you do lose sight of yourself and I think it's a really simple and easy way to just update how you feel is by just splashing on a little bit of color and if you're terrified of color then just do an accessory or a print that you love that speaks to you you know it doesn't have to be a leopard although I highly recommend it it could be something that you know is just speaks to you find the pieces that spark your joy basically yeah and 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 I think we you know we stop being playful with with what we're wearing you know and a lot of that is 
you know, just if we are working in an office environment, we don't get a lot of choice. But I think things are changing there and that there is a little bit more freedom and, and yeah, just giving ourselves permission to be a little bit more playful. I think that that's really true. I also think there's a lot to be said for the fact that as we get older, I was talking to two friends about it before, we're actually, I I had to drive quite a long way yesterday and it was, the traffic was terrible. It was nighttime. The light was, it was pouring with rain. And I actually felt really anxious. I'm not an anxious driver at all. In fact, I quite enjoy driving on my own and I've never minded it at night, but I suddenly felt very anxious about being on the road in the car this time (laughs) and I just feel at this at this time of our life and that doesn't just relate to driving that can relate to putting on clothes and feeling like you're going to be judged you know social media has a lot to answer for in a lot of ways it's brilliant on so many levels but on other levels it's there is a lot of judgment and I should know and (laughs) you know you get these comments and actually I might post a picture for example and feel nice in it and want to show something that might be inspiring to some people and you get quite a lot you might get a lot of negativity or you might get or you might get what I got the other day which was a message that was not meant for me that was meant to be sent to somebody else (laughs) wasn't wasn't particularly nice and I get that I get that women lose their confidence and they suddenly feel as though they will be judged more. And so they retreat inwards and they don't want to experiment and they don't want to make those bold choices because actually the reality is they don't want to stand out. And I think Mm. there's a really nice balance, I think, to to find yourself and to feel good in what you're wearing and to hopefully get to that point where we just don't care what anyone else thinks. Yeah, I mean, there there is that other sort of flip side, isn't it, of, of getting older and it's like, yeah, I just... No, no F's left to give anymore. Yeah, so it was just absolutely. Flexing that um, that playfulness muscle and sort of starting small and then kind of getting a little bit more adventurous maybe each yeah. time. Well, that's what Sam Baker's last question is, isn't it, in her podcast? How many F's do you give still? <laughs> and I, I <laughs> think I said when I did, yeah, <laughs> and I think I said when I did her podcast, I think I said, I think I've got about three, about three now. <laughs> Three out of five. On a day. Still a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> You're out. But working on zero. <laughs> so the, my slightly playful question then is is around, uh, I've called de- Desert Island Dresses, because we know if we follow you, how that you are the queen of dresses and you absolutely love them. And you have a few. I do. So... I do. Quite a few. Dresses and coats are my thing. <laughs> <laughs> so if I told you you could only take your top three away with you to your desert island inverted commas which which three would you pick and why well would I be wearing a dress on a desert island that's what well, I'd like to I say know. desert island but that might influence your yeah, choice okay. let's say it's a okay. temperate uh, okay we're, well, we're an island aren't we we're just not a desert we are. island <laughs> we are definitely not a desert island um okay so I think they would all be very similar they would all be a midi length because that's my happy length mm. I've got a fab leopard print one from a company called Damson Matter, which I've worn to death on Instagram, but I just wear it so often. It's so useful. It's cotton. I can layer things underneath it. Love that one. I think I would take a really gorgeous navy blue cord dress that I invested in from a small Instagram brand called Joanna Sands. And I wear that a lot. That's kind of my smart. I've got a work meeting. I love that. Fail Sorry, safe. The table. <laughs> Fail safe. Um, and then I think my third one, which would my third one be? I, I th- I've got a beautiful, I've, I've actually got a couple of caftans that I come on every holiday with me. And I think I would just take one of those because it's that that lovely piece that would remind me of those holiday times. You know, that times mm. when you come back, you're out of the sun, you've had a shower, you're just having maybe a gin and tonic on your balcony and you've got your, you don't want to put your dressing gown on. So I put one of these caftans on I and it just makes me feel like caftan. holidays. Maybe I need a caftan in my life. I just find them so useful and I belt them. I take, I wear them on holiday as I've just described, but equally I will wear them to the beach. I will wear them out with sparkly sandals for a night out. So I kind of get a lot of wear out of them. So there you go. That's my three. And that was very hard. <laughs> don't know what's happening to the rest of them, but it's all right. It's only hypothetical. Don't, don't worry. Break you out in the cold sweat. Don't make me give them up. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Erica. I know we're, we're going to try and record a little uh, piece uh, off air 
do a little styling. So if it all works and I can edit the video, we'll maybe put that on the on Instagram or up on the website or something just to have a little play. But thank you so much for coming on. It's been a joy to, to meet you. Really enjoyed coming to see you do your chat at Henley uh, Literary Festival. Oh, thank you so, for coming. Yeah. Thank you for asking me. It's been lovely. You've been listening to the Middling Along podcast. Do remember to subscribe to be notified when our next episode is live. And why not visit the blog at www.middlingalong.com to sign up to my newsletter as well. I do hope you enjoyed listening today. If you did, I'd be really grateful if you would consider leaving a short review as that helps people find the podcast and helps get it noticed. Hope you can join us next time. Goodbye for now.